Golf has been said to be a game of angles and adjustments, and for Wyatt Isles and his family, life has proven to be the same. He was born normally, and up until about 18 months, he developed normally. And then one night, laid him down in the crib to go to bed, and it was like turning the light switch off. The next morning, he was the child that I put to bed was just gone. All of the verbal skills he had, all of the eye contact he had, everything was gone. He was like a shell of the child that I'd put to bed that night. He had typical stimming behaviors where he would rock back and forth. He would flash his fingers in front of his eyes. He wouldn't speak. He wouldn't respond to ver verbal cues. And he, he was just gone. Wyatt was diagnosed with severe autism, and for the next year, he made little to no contact with the outside world. While his parents, doctors, and therapists tried to make progress with Wyatt, it seemed that Wyatt's life and his future had made a permanent adjustment. Before um, I noticed any difficulties, he was developing absolutely normal. And like any parent, at some point you entertain ideas when you put your child to bed at night, and you, they might be like, is my child happy? Be when they grow up? Will they be successful when they grow up? Will my child uh, get married? Um, I think things like this, but all of these ideas and hopes are built on just that, on hope. But then when you get the diagnosis of autism with the severe behaviors, it goes from hope to almost hopelessness because then your thought process becomes, well, will he be able to live independently or will he need to be institutionalized? Um, if he succeeds me in life, and then what would become of him, you know? And that sense of hopelessness and desperation can become really overwhelming. When Wyatt was nearly four years old, he finally reached out, not in school, not in therapy, not even in one of the countless hours his parents worked with him to communicate. It was a flash of hope, like flipping a light switch or changing a channel. You know, he'd make different sounds that were incoherent, but. He, he hadn't spoken. And then one day I turned on the television to watch Sesame Street or Barney or what have you. And I was pushing the channel up button and came across the golf channel. And the first word he had said to me, what's that? What's that? So I said, well, it was especially exciting because it was the first thing he had ever said. So I was like, wow, this is great. As Wyatt's interest in golf grew, his father realized that this game he had never played himself could be the key to not only engaging his son, but advancing his treatment. I decided, well, you like watching the Golf Channel so much, I'm going to go to the local store and buy you a junior set of golf clubs. And he would, we'd come here every day as a reward system, you know, he'd come here and play golf and he'd play on the putting green and the driving range. and. Then, and then he just absolutely loved golf, absolutely loved playing it. So I'd explain to him, well, if you do a good job with the therapist and if you listen to what they have to say and they tell me you do a good job, I'll take you to play golf. That was his reward system. That just turned him around related to his therapy session. And it pretty much pulled him out of his severely autistic traits. And I think uh, golf is, uh, has uh, helped him in the sense of controlling himself. Golf had given Wyatt an outlet, an interest, and a reward, but it had also presented a new challenge. As Wyatt excels in school and his ability to play golf, he still lacks behavioral skills necessary not only on the golf course, but in life. Enter Special Olympics Southern California. Special Olympics, especially related to golf, they've been just amazingly supportive and nurturing related to the etiquette of golf, because that was one, of the most difficult to teach things to teach Wyatt, even beyond the golf swing and the proper swing technique, the proper putting technique, and how to perform better, is the issue of etiquette. And that's especially difficult for autistic children because they want to perform well, they have certain expectations, and if something happens that doesn't match that expectation, the world flips upside down and they have tantrum-like behaviors. And that was the most difficult thing for Wyatt to overcome. Now able to do that without incident, behavior incident whatsoever, and that's directly attributed to Special Olympics. Special Olympics can help you if you're um, high function autism like me, or has a really bad disease. And it can help you that learning that you shouldn't be discouraged by your disability. You should only move on and, and 
and be who you are. I think you should go to Special Olympics because of that and by the fact that no one discouraged you there. Because I know from personal experience that if you all have disabilities like me, you probably be been bullied and stuff like that. But I be and special Olympics, you won't be bullied and you be learn a lot of things like me. So I really encourage you to go to Special Olympics if you are like me. <laughs> Over the years, Special Olympics Southern California has given Wyatt a safe place to learn, compete, and develop his self-esteem and confidence. In Special Olympics, everyone's a winner. I mean, in Special Olympics, it doesn't matter if you get first place or you don't get first place. You still are a winner because you came out and tried. And that's the importance of Special Olympics, I believe. Now 11 years old, Wyatt has already accomplished so much more than doctors or even his parents had expected. Through Special Olympics Southern California and golf, Wyatt proves every day that with support and attention to details, anything can happen. Pay attention to details. Little details that can inspire and bring forth amazing things. Um, he had an interest in golf. And he said, what's that? And I just said, oh, that's golf, and kept changing the channel. Because I wasn't raised with golf. I had no personal interest in it, no relationship with it. But because of him not being verbal, that created a cue. As well as therapies that work on their weaknesses, develop their strengths and their interests and their passions, because that can take them all over. And you can use their passions as rewards to help bring up their weaknesses. He's accomplished things like them. Um, making this national junior golf team and only 18 kids in America that's amazing it's amazing in 2009 he was selected out of 245,000 uh, individuals serviced by the California Department of Disability disabled service to light the Christmas tree with the governor as a result of his academics and his athletics and so he's done some amazing things as a child that I never even accomplished yet in my life, so I'm just immensely proud of him. It's just amazing.